This week, over 20% of the Wizards of the Coast workforce were fired right before Christmas. This was an unbelievably callous and cruel decision performed by the executives of Hasbro and announced by Chris Cox, CEO, in a memo this week. Now, the scale of devastation is profound here. The impact that this will have not only on the individuals that have been fired, but all of those at Wizards of the Coast will be immeasurable. And there will be reverberations onto Dungeons and Dragons and the launch of the new edition that will be keenly felt. This is a low point in Hasbro's history, even by the sewer level standards that they have set for themselves this year. However, the barbarity and impact of this decision and its results for Wizards of the Coast are far worse than you probably think. And the root of this rotten decision goes a lot deeper than many are willing to admit. Now, you might have seen this event referred to as a new round of layoffs. Chris Cox, CEO of Hasbro, called it a headcount reduction. I've heard of some content creators calling it trimming the fat. Well, let's be clear. We're talking about people that have been unceremoniously booted from their jobs. A lot of people. 1,100 to be exact, with another 900 announced last January. And these aren't ancillary positions either. This cuts from the heart of Wizards of the Coast. To give you an idea of the scale, Sven Vink of Larian Studios, the studio that designed the massively successful Baldur's Gate 3, has said that of the people in the original meeting room who worked with him on Baldur's Gate, there's almost nobody left. The people that were fired include incredibly senior team members. For example, designer Dan Dillon, talent manager Paul Schoen, creator relations Dixon Dubow, graphic designer Tristan Falcone, art director Brie Hess, senior art director Mike Valencourt, and the D&D art manager Rob Sather, and many, 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 many more. This is devastating. Art has been slashed particularly hard, generating the ghoulish specter of AI art in the future. Though, hopefully not. The design team have also been slashed, and overall, Wizards of the Coast have been stripped of much of its senior talent. And this comes at a terrible time. For the employees right before Christmas, but for players and consumers of RPGs, this occurs right before a brand new edition of Dungeons & Dragons, right when you would expect that the company could use all hands on deck for the inevitable crunch that will be demanded by Hasbro executives to get the game across the finish line. So what What madness could have inspired this? Well, Chris Cox explained his rationale for firing so many people in so many important roles in a memo. Taking a moment away from sucking the blood of orphans, he said this. While we are confident in the future of Hasbro, the current environment demands that we do more. Even if these choices are some of the hardest we have to make, I know that this news is especially difficult during this holiday season. Ah, there is no sugarcoating how hard this is. Ha, ha, ha. Particularly for the employees directly affected. To position Hasbro for growth, we need to modernize our organization and get even leaner. While we see workforce reductions as a last resort, it is a lever we must pull to keep Hasbro healthy. Ha, ha. Ah. Now, you might be wondering, if this is such a hard decision for Chris, why do it at all? Well, the supposed answer is that Hasbro is in danger. That the company has issues only resolvable by firing a ton of employees in Wizards of the Coast. For example, it's been no secret that Hasbro's toy wing is in major trouble. Recently, Hasbro, in the quest for ever-growing profits, transitioned their focus from toys for children to toys for adults. No, not that kind. You can't find Cox on OnlyFans. But this was done as part of a strategy. They're trying to find a new audience of toy mad adult big spenders, or as the boardroom call them, wheels. So far though, that doesn't seem to be working. Likewise, Hasbro's ventures into entertainment have also met with disaster. In 2019, Hasbro celebrated a $4 billion buyout of the entertainment company E1 as part of their brand blueprint strategy. Then revenue from the entertainment unit fell 42%. And now they're selling it back for 500 million. Truly superb business skills right there. Just a $3.5 billion f*** <coughs> up. Never mind though, onwards and upwards. It's not like they're going to feel any consequences because now Chris Cox and his fellow C-suite executives have decided that the 
remorseless swing of the scythe must fall on Wizards of the Coast, and they must pay the price. 20% of the staff must go, and there is no other choice to keep Hasbro healthy. Except, you know, there was one alternative that could have been made by Chris Cox and his fellow execs. I mean, I'm not sure why they didn't bring it up, but it's another way to maybe save some money. After all, Hasbro is in such a dire situation. So here's a suggestion. Why don't Chris Cox and his fellow executives just take a pay cut? How many jobs could be saved if they did? I mean, this wouldn't be just a drop in the ocean. Chris Cox alone earned $9.4 million in 2022, a 250% increase in his compensation compared to 2021. How is that for wageflation? If he just took a sacrifice of that, we could get at least 123 employees saved, all paid at the Seattle annual average of 75,000. I mean, that's quite a few jobs saved. Why isn't he doing that? And then if the other execs take cuts, well, there's even more jobs saved. <laughs> this isn't without precedent. This is what the CEO of Nintendo did when the Wii U failed. Satoru Iwata famously cut his salary in half in order to avoid having to fire staff. Chris Cox could follow his magnanimous example. Hell, Cox could even decide not to take a massive bonus this year. That would help keep Hasbro healthy too. For some reason, this was never mentioned in Chris's memos to staff as an option. In fact, I suspect that it was never even considered. And the reason for that is, of course, that employees of Hasbro, the people that actually produce anything worthwhile in that company, are expendable. They are expendable on the altar of profit and of protecting Chris Cox cock and his fellow executives cox. Sorry, salary him and salary all those times. Except when they f*** up. For when the great lords go to war, it is always the small folk that suffer. And already, there are some people defending this decision to remove 20% of Watsi's staff as if Chris Cox is merely a servant to shareholders making the tough but noble decisions. I mean, that's certainly how he presented himself in his memo announcing the cuts. Weary is the head that holds the crown. However, what never seems to get mentioned about this burden is that Chris Cox is himself a shareholder. He owns 5.67 million dollars worth of Hasbro stock as part of his CEO compensation package and he personally benefits when the stock price is high. Well I'm sure glad that he is looking out for at least one little guy. But he can't even get that right because stocks are now down at least 18% from the beginning of the year. So when talking about this, we must remember that Chris Cox and his fellow executives' personal wealth are twisted into the stock value of Hasbro, and it directly benefits all of them personally as individuals to maintain the stock price and do whatever it takes to raise it higher. This isn't about a duty to shareholders. This is a duty to one's own advancement regardless of the human cost. I mean, no one ever wants to talk about this, and I'm aware that more than likely me even mentioning it will result in me being blacklisted by Hasbro Wizards, which partly could be why nobody ever talks about it. But hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. This video was originally meant to be about gifts for RPG fans for Christmas, so subscribe if you want more content like that. But then, you know, this news broke, and now my sponsorship for this week that was arranged last month is going to be incredibly awkwardly placed no matter where I put it in today's video. So thanks a lot for that, Cox. Regardless, this is all just the beginning because the problem for Hasbro and the problem that we, that the Dungeons & Dragons community and the RPG community is facing is much worse than you think. But before we get into that, I say we sharpen our pitchforks, gather our torches, and march on Hasbro to- <laughs> Oh, what a merry time we're having. But the Christmas cheer doesn't end there. See, every so often, I get a sponsorship on the channel that I'm so excited for, because it just hits all my nerdy interests just right. And today's sponsor, Displate, is one of those sponsors. Displate create unique metal posters designed for basically everything that I love. They have so much variety, laser targeted at my own personal interests. And honestly, with over 1 million designs, probably yours too. They have Dungeons and Dragons posters, Warhammer posters, Batman, comic books, Marvel. They have the goddamn loading screen art for Crusader Kings. Come on. And even better, they have famous artists like Frazetta, done some of the most prolific 
prolific fantasy art, and even my favorite artist, Rene Magritte too. They have so much amazing stuff here, the variety is unbelievable. And if you're like, okay, Discourse, big whoop, you got some pretty pictures, here's what makes these different. You do not need to drill into your walls to put these pictures up. They use magnets. You simply wipe your wall with a clean and wipe, you stick a protective leaf onto it, and this comes with the display it. Then you stick a magnet up there, and ta-da, your house is basically the Louvre. It takes like 20 seconds to put a display it up. This makes it super easy and convenient to decorate your home and change the decorations around as often as you like. And you don't even get landlords then getting annoyed at all these holes in the wall, and they come around to your house and they hit you with a bit of wood, or they take your roof away. Look up landlords in Ireland. There's a lot of fun pictures. These also make the perfect present for friends and family because there's something on here for anyone. So do be quick to make sure that your order arrives on time for Santa. Use my exclusive discount code DUNGEONS at checkout to get 22% off any display you buy or 33% off if you buy three or more. So please do check them out because I would love for them to get a lot of business from this sponsorship so that I can convince them to send me more art. I have my eye on a Frazetta piece. Help me out, guys. There's a link in the description of this video. Click it. The discount will be applied automatically at checkout. Thanks to Display It for sponsoring today's video. Thanks for that Christmas message. Discourse from the past? This was meant to be a very different video. Now, as much as I would love to call for Chris Cox and his fellow executives to be ejected from their tower and for a new group to ride in and sort things out and fix Hasbro Wizards and then everything could be rosy and fine. Ultimately, that's actually not going to solve the problem here. And I don't think that new executives can even fix things. Hasbro are bloodsuckers and the executives could have made different choices throughout this year, but ultimately the problem problem at Hasbro goes a lot deeper than a single bad actor. Chris Cox is just a symptom of a much larger issue. He's a symptom of a system that doesn't work. One that prioritizes short-term gains over long-term investment. One that is obsessed with endless unsustainable growth and is ultimately an experiment that has had disastrous results. Public corporations like Hasbro are just no longer fit for purpose. There is little evidence that corporate performance has actually improved as a result of public ownership and I think it's time that we all face that fact. It's becoming increasingly clear throughout society, and this is just one more instance. And Dungeons and Dragons is suffering for being in the custody of a public company. Now, I'm sure that the Hasbro execs have done some creative accounting to figure out just how much money will be saved by Hasbro Wizards as a result of firing this many employees in their workforce. And someone, somewhere, I'm sure, thinks that it's justified. But this was a disastrous decision to make. Make no bones about it. Not only will this event compound upon the frankly cartoonishly villainous perception of Hasbro in the general RPG community, one that Hasbro have rightly gained in the last 12 months, they have squandered any consumer goodwill that they had, any portion of it that might have still existed under some rock in the middle of the Gobi Desert. But these cuts have been aimed at the most successful part of Hasbro. Wizards of the Coast is not part of the toy sector. It's not part of the entertainment sector. It's Hasbro Wizards core business. And the truth is that Wizards of the Coast is doing relatively well. Yes, there are problems and there are things to criticize, but Magic the Gathering is making more money than ever and Dungeons and Dragons has grown far larger than anyone could have imagined. This year should have been nothing but wins for D&D. Baldur's Gate 3 was incredible. The D&D movie was fantastic if you were watching the correct one. It was business-led decisions at Hasbro Wizards that have led to so many self-owns. Ones like the OGL scandal that kicked off this year. And now Hasbro have committed another scandal now on the Christmas Eve of the next Dungeons and Dragons game and they've forcibly removed the majority of their senior design and art team as well as countless others. So how the hell is the new edition meant to succeed now? Now when you've told your employees it doesn't matter if you perform well or badly you're going to lose your job regardless. How demoralizing is that? How many people are now looking to leave looking over their shoulder? How many are now looking to strike? And frankly they probably should. This has f***ed Dungeons and Dragons. And frankly, if this new edition of D&D 
doesn't perform well, if it does badly, that could genuinely sink the entirety of Hasbro. I mean, they're looking very unstable right now. Why they cut their own legs out from under them, I have no idea. So that's just another thing, I guess, for employees at Watsy to consider if they are thinking about striking. And by the way, solidarity if you do. And the ironic part is Hasbro would make more money by investing in their creatives, giving them the space and the support to create more and better and unique and different products. Things that appeal to people that actually play the game or aspire to play the game. For example, I recently got this solo RPG from Chaosium, Alone Against the Static. Now, this was sent out to me for free, so, you know, bias, bear that in mind, but I had a lot of fun playing a solo RPG game while being my own dungeon master. It felt very novel. It was cool. And when I was playing it, I thought, why hasn't Hasbro done something like this? Why doesn't Hasbro Wizards innovate with Dungeons and Dragons in a way that isn't just about profiting off of players as hard as possible? That isn't about inventing the need for further subscription fees and recurring revenue. That isn't about digitizing the game and trying to maximize the money that they can make. Mm, ah, and there it is. They would rather fire their creatives because they have no respect for the creative process. It's not what they care about. The company is run by ghouls. It's designed for ghouls. And now we're all surprised that they're feeding on our flesh. In contrast to how they've behaved, Hasbro Wizards should be getting more creatives and giving them more time and space to build more games and actually create. Instead, Hasbro Wizards are getting rid of them and replacing them with who? Interns? Contractors? AI? I mean, probably. We'll save a few bucks. That's all that matters, right? This entire situation really sucks, but I suppose I hope that Hasbro's loss is the RPG market's gain and that many of these extremely experienced people that have been fired now find work within the third party market, adding to it, strengthening it against the dominance of Dungeons and Dragons, and that we see lots of these former employees move into the independent space and help build their own games or work with existing ones. I mean, the indie market, the rest of the RPG market is going to be a lot richer as a result of this, I hope. And to be honest, my feeling is that these days, if you are a creative, there's no security in working for a corporation anymore, and this is just indicative of that. Instead, you're better off creating your own stuff. At least that way, you get to own the profit off of it. Ultimately, I suspect that this all will be looked back on as a huge mistake for Hasbro Wizards, one that could cost it its very existence. Nevertheless, in the here and now, it is a massive, devastating loss and a huge blow to those affected. The people who failed Dungeons & Dragons are not those that were fired, but those who did the firing. And there will be consequences for Hasbro Wizards, not only in the long term, but in the short as well. We'll see how well the new edition of D&D does after this. And if you want to support this content, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse minis. It's the only way that I'm able to produce this type of content and apparently get blacklisted or simply subscribe to the channel and hit the like button below. I really appreciate it. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially Novani and Travis Hunter. And an extra special shout out to my first captain, Crypto Kev. Big food is out there and Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.